Hey everybody, Benjamin Simons here. I wanted to make a quick video today on the absolute dream that is track stacks within Logic Pro. So it's going to be a little tip if you're uh, like me and probably only really know and use about 2 or 3% of what Logic Pro can actually do. So I've only recently discovered this. Um, and if you already know what and, and use track stacks in Logic Pro, then just stop watching now. So I've got this queue here, basically. Um, it's not a huge track or anything by, by any means, but it will do for the purpose of uh, demonstration. So for composers or musicians out there that have sessions that are going into the multiple hundred tracks, you know, if you're using giant templates and things like that, then this is going to be something that I think will make your ease of navigation um, and you know, finding what you're looking for quickly far easier and just make your general workflow a lot easier to manage. So I'll jump straight in and, and get cracking with it basically. So we want to break it down into sections if you were to imagine it as uh, stems for example. So at the end of your project or the end of your session what would you be looking to stem out um, to send to whoever it might be, mixer, whoever, whatever. So um, I've got some kind of string effects here, so I'm going to put them in one. So the first thing to think to, to think about is that there's two different kinds of track stack. Uh, and to, to get to them, you highlight the tracks that you want to put into a track stack. So in this case, it's Spitfire Audio's uh, Frozen Strings. Select the tracks, right click on the channel strip and create track stack. Now there are two different kinds of track stack. There's a folder, which is literally just a, a, a folder that you are condensing those tracks into that you can't do anything to really other than adjust the volume of. So I'll show you an example of what happens if you create a folder stack. So you'll see there those MIDI tracks have been condensed. It's titled it sub one. And if I want to open it up to see those individual tracks, you click on that arrow here. Now what you'll see is if you look at the mix window, is that the track is empty and I can't do anything to it apart from volume automation and things like that. So that's not what really I'm looking to achieve here, uh, as I might want to do some processing on it on my own, um, all that kind of jazz. So the alternative option is to create a summing stack, which when you do this with those three tracks, will create the uh, an aux channel essentially, which means that you can still add EQs and audio effects uh, and you can assign outputs and do all that kind of stuff, which will be useful. So what I'll do here is we'll, we'll title this one, uh, let's call it string effects. So once you've labeled your track stack, whatever you want to call it, you, a nice thing that you can start doing is to start adding some kind of color scheme across all your stacks. So that just to aid in further making your life easier. So you want to highlight the stack and all the, all the tracks within that stack. Right click on one of those tracks and come on down to assign track color uh, and then you know, pick any color you want. You'll notice that they the regions don't change color automatically and there's a couple of ways that you can uh, get them to change. Uh, so one of which is to highlight the uh, all the regions by clicking on the tracks themselves and click on one of those regions and color regions by tracks. The other way to do that is to if you do command A to highlight all of your tracks, then you can color everything at once and you can also name everything at once. What, you're, what I tend to find is, as someone that does a little bit of copy and pasting, if I'm copying a staccato violin line down to a staccato cello line, and I'm using the same region, then I'm gonna make changes within that new region, that the actual, that region itself is called violin stat, but it's on a cello channel, if that makes sense. Uh, so it makes things easier by naming regions by tracks. It will automatically change it to what it needs to be on that associated channel. Right, so we've got string effects. The next thing I've got here are sort of staccato strings. So this is super boring, right? So I decided to just fast forward it all to spare you from having to watch me go through label and change the color of everything one at a time. And then I'm going to come back in with some useful information now. And then what I like to do as well is to keep sort of color schemes within a instrument range the same and then change them for new things so like winds for example we could maybe make them yellow for example so let's do that 
highlight all these again. Cool, and we'll collapse. Uh, and we've got brass. So we're back with fast forwarding. So to go onto that color point, um, it's nice to keep all your strings in some kind of a similar color. So all your strings are a shade of blue, all of your percussion or all of your brass or a certain shade of orange or you know whatever it needs to be, just to help you keep things easy to find when you're going through stuff basically. And I'm coming back now, look. So this is what it looks like when it's done. Everything is color coded, everything that's in its individual folder. Uh, you can collapse and open as many of them as you should so wish. Um, one of the reasons why I like this is that when you've compen when you condense them all down and you're listening through uh, what you've been doing and you hear, oh, there's some automation on one of my high string melodies that's not quite right, you can open up that individual stack, find out, you know, you can solo just all the strings. Um, you can solo the low strings with it. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can start listening through and thinking, okay, yeah, it's in here. We'll go in here. We'll fix it. Cool, we're done. We'll collapse it back down again. We'll run and solo it and we'll keep going through. Um, a few other little things that um, are worth pointing out. With, Let's say you've written a, a section um, of, of music. So let's say this section here uh, where we've got pretty much everything that's going on and you'd like to copy and paste that so that it can happen later on in the track. Let me just make some space here. You don't need to go into um, your stack and highlight all your individual tracks, copy in, and then paste them wherever you want. Just take the stack itself, so high strings. We'll take this stack and we'll move it over here and we'll paste it. And it will move everything, the automation within it, all that kind of stuff is all there ready and done. So instead of like going through and highlighting multiple different regions that you want to move, you, if you've cut your regions properly, then you'll be able to just go through, highlight the individual stacks tracks that you want to move, and then copy and paste large sections of audio at any given time. Now, in terms of creating stems, I don't know how um, everybody does it, but one way of doing it is being able to bounce out all of your um, all of your stems into audio tracks within Logic and then exporting the audio from there. So we'll do a quick demo on how, um, how you can do that with this setup. So if you look here in the mix window, you can see that every stack has its own bus input. So we've got one, two, three, four through to 10. So what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to create 10 audio tracks not 19 and then we're going to go through these audio tracks we'll name them so that they are <coughs> matching the uh, matching the relevant stack and then what we'll do is we'll change the input uh, so that the input for this is bus one string effects and then we'll repeat that process all the way through so to save you from watching me do it Enjoy this fast forwarding. Okay, so that's done. Um, now, I don't like particularly that then I've got 10 audio tracks sat there. Uh, so what you can do then is just create a, um, a folder stack instead of the sum track. We don't need to make another aux channel. So we'll make that folder stack and we'll just call this stems. So now we've got everything nice and pretty looking all together. Uh, and once we're happy with our track, we can just simply open up the stem track, arm them all to record and hit go. Trust me, I was tempted to make you listen to this song, but I decided against it. Okay, so then once you've got all your, uh, all your tracks here, they're the stems that have been recorded down into their individual tracks, highlight them all, export, export audio files, and then from there, name, save, change the format, do whatever you want, chuck them in a folder and send them to whoever's going to make them sound really cool. All right. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys.